Hi, I'm Shannon. And I'm Jay. Today we explore the surrounding areas of Murray Bridge. I can't wait to go on a paddle boat cruise along the Murray River. Then we get up close and personal and check out some live animals at Monado Zoo. Sounds great, Jay. Let's do it. We start the day off in Murray Bridge, South Australia's fourth largest city with a population of 15,000 people. Originally known as Mobilong, then as Edwards Crossing, the city was eventually renamed in 1924 as Murray Bridge. Murray Bridge is well known as a day off destination among South Australians as it offers a range of leisure activities including water skiing, rowing and river cruises. It also has great parks and picnic areas where people can take a break and enjoy the view. We are about to get onto one of the cruises along the river and check out the surrounding areas of the city and the beautiful rusty banks of the River Murray. Did you know that there are nine paddle boat shipwrecks at Murray Bridge? I'm about to get onto the Captain Proud paddle boat today and go for a three hour cruise. Hopefully we don't make the tent. Previously named the Proud Lady, the boat worked as an original showboat on the Port River in 1977. It was renamed the Captain Proud in 1989 after a fire caused the boat to be rebuilt. The paddle boat is now in service in Murray Bridge where it's available for charter and cruises seven days a week. Throughout the cruise, many curious passengers come into the captain's cabin to have a chat and a crack at steering the boat. Welcome with great stories and a quick lesson, Shannon could not let this opportunity slip away, so she was one of the first people to come up and have a go. Now I'm lucky enough to be with Steve here, who's the captain of the Captain Proud paddle boat. How are you going, Steve? Hi Shannon, how are you? I'm good, and um, today you said that I could be your apprentice first mate. Absolutely. Now how can I go about steering this? Well, how about you step in where I am, that's the first thing yep. to do. And then see this white pole out here, that's your steering pole. It's the pole is, So really. if you just yep. line that up with something and then just turn, it's just like a car, yep. turn it to the right to go right or left to go left. Great, as soon as you start to see it wander, you have to turn the wheel the opposite way to keep it going straight. Well, at least I'm in the middle of the river, so I don't have yeah, anything exactly, to run into yet. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's all looking good. Yeah. So I suppose the current and the wind are the main things that you've got to they take do. into consideration they when you're do. driving a paddle boat. They do. Yeah. Particularly when just after we've had heavy rainfall and we're getting flood waters down, yeah. the current is a lot stronger and we need to take that into consideration. So can um, you drive the paddle boat when it's raining as well? We can, we can. They're just, uh, yeah, well, we're, the passengers are under cover, yep. so it's okay. But a day like today is perfect because they can go out on our decks and, and just yeah, it's see, a beautiful day. see things. Yeah. See how we're coming around quite nicely now? So start to work at the other so way. Now. <laughs> keep, just keep going, keep going. We need to go around a couple of revolutions. See how we're swinging around quite severely? Yeah. That's, that's all. This is, this is where it, uh, we've got huge, two huge rudders on here. And look at this, we've got some beautiful cliffs coming up. How am I going so far? Can I right. um, be your, your well, first we're, mate we're, today? Or? We're looking good. <laughs> I think we'll give you a certificate. Oh good, yeah. Throughout the cruise, people get to see much of the famous Murray River landscapes, including its rusty colour banks and wetlands. Much of the fauna and flora in the area plays a vital role in the river's development and movement. These include both native and recently introduced species. So we're having a great afternoon on the Captain Proud paddle boat today, Steve. Um, but the Murray River itself has a lot of history behind it, doesn't it? It certainly does. Uh, not only with just the paddle steamers, but certainly uh, all of this uh, was originally under ice. All of this mm. was uh, the ice age. and. After all of that uh, ice melted and receded, this is what we're left with. Uh, people tell me this is about 70,000 million years old approximately. As we pass these beautiful sandstone cliffs, they do have some limestone crusts as well. Yeah, you can see the sedimentary layers in there. There are some cliffs further upstream where archaeologists actually found skeletal remains of sharks. And so, that's from being in the inland seas. Yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, it was obviously uh, fossilised yeah. over all those years, so certainly dates back a fair bit, and as we see it today, is pretty much 
uh, how it has been obviously in our lifetime and for many people before us. Murray-Darling Basin is, is an area in Australia of about 1 million square kilometres. There are 20 major rivers in that system, uh, of which the Murray's one. 75% of New South Wales is in the Murray-Darling Basin, um, about uh, two-thirds of Victoria, 15% of Queensland, 7% of South Australia and all of the ACT. Now that area is not just really useful for people on boats, but the environment is a big issue in that area. Um, we have over 200 species of birds, we have about 85 species of mammals, we have snakes, we have fish, only about 30 species of fish dominated by the European carp. It's important to have a healthy river because all of those uh, birds and wildlife can't survive. So uh, it's really important these days. We're very fortunate with the state of the river. We have had uh, nasty times, as you would be well aware, with the drought. Definitely, yeah. But two and a half years ago, things turned around and things are great now. We're, we're running at kind of normal levels. It's really important uh, for the health of the river. I mean, the salinity levels have fallen since we've had flood waters. The lower parts of the river uh, are much healthier now than they were. We had a lot of acid uh, acidosis going on downstream towards the mouth. Um, but certainly, just in that terrible Queensland flood waters that we had in 2010, within about five months of that water flowing down into South Australia, we pretty much dealt with all of our problems and now it's a healing process of getting the environment back and all the trees. It's made such a big difference hasn't it? Oh, it's just, it looks beautiful. The, the, the wildlife is amazing, you know, yeah. you could see it all coming back together before your eyes when that water started flowing in. It was just amazing to see. So we just passed that uh, beautiful swamp back there, the wetlands. Can you tell us about those? There's a few of them around the Murray, isn't there? There is. We will see a couple today. This is the River Glades wetlands just here. Uh, as you would have noticed as we went past, there's lots of pelicans in there, yeah, there uh, lots of uh, beautiful swans, and of course ducks are in there. There's, there's quite a bit of bird life. That was pretty much a disaster when we had our drought. It was just dry, there was nothing going on. Um, but that's typical of how it's regenerated itself. Wetlands are very important to the health of the river, um, or the river is more so the wetlands are dependent on the river being healthy, of course. Uh, but just all these trees that line the river, we have many willow trees and, and the most famous of the tree trees that we find in the Murray-Darling Basin is of course the river red gum and the river red gum tree is a very resilient tree. It can live through drought and survive. It also survives for up to nine months of being submerged in water in a flood time. Really? Mm, the long, river, that's a long time, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, the river red gums is what they built all of the paddle stands out of. So uh, they used to, and they were also, it was the choice of timber for firing in Palestine because it was a very hard wood and it burnt for a long time and uh, that was the fuel needed to drive the paddle steamers which used to use between a third and a half a tonne of wood per hour. So it was a pretty big industry. But there are a lot of other trees in the Murray-Darling uh, Basin including these sort of weeping willows and box willow trees. Yeah, they were, there was, there was, they were planted by the old riverboat captains because when this river used to flood before we had locks and weirs, if you got into this main river channel and it flooded and spread out over this area here for instance which is very flat, it would give you the impression the river may have been one or three miles wide. This is before we had levee banks built. So the weeping willow trees or all the willow trees were planted by the old uh, riverboat captains because when the river rose in flood the tops of the trees would stick out of the out of the river and they would act as channel markers. They would have been very important I can imagine for the boat they, drivers. But, they were. Yeah. The old uh, riverboat captains, um, there weren't a lot of charts around in those early days, they used to produce their own so this is one of the things that they used to assist with that. But over time uh, the charts were established and that information is now used in commercial publications for uh, showing you where to go and what not to do on the river. So uh, those old guys really had a lot tougher than what we did, you know, it was a high level of skill.
Steve, you mentioned before that the Captain Proud paddle boat has been around since the 70s, That's which right. is a long time ago. Can you tell me a bit of history about it? Sure. Um, 1977, she was built down at Port Adelaide um, and called the Proud Lady back in those days. Um, she had a propeller on board and was a uh, one of the original show boats that used to operate down on the Port River. And what is a show boat? <laughs> oh, well, there were two or three boats down there that operated that did much what we do, lunch cruises, dinner cruises. Uh, yeah. That was just fancy lights, the whole bit. It was all very nice. Yeah. Um, but then she uh, came up to the river in the 80s, 1980s, and um, she had a terrible fire on board and it was almost a total loss. And when she was rebuilt, she was renamed the Captain Proud and uh, she became a paddle boat. So that's how we've got our paddles. And, and then she pretty much operated on the River Murray as far upstream as Uchuka and spent a bit of time in Swan Hill um, until settling here in Murray Bridge where it's been pretty much working in the Murray Bridge area for 20 years. So tell me a bit about your story then. How did you come about being the captain of this, this great boat? Well, um, I started, I, I had a real job once upon a time, <laughs> uh, but uh, I just decided I'd, I'd do something about my post-working life into retirement. So I actually started as a deckhand and a barman on the dolphin boats down at Port Adelaide. And then I started to get some qualifications and I did a lot of training on the Marion paddle steamer as a trainee deckhand. And then from there I worked my way up to first mate and then got a skipper's ticket or a master class five ticket as they call it. And then Another few years after that, I then got my master class four. So, um, yeah, I've been very fortunate. I had a lot of uh, people that were very good to me when I was learning that gave me the opportunity to not only uh, learn the theoretical side of it, but allowed me to get boat handling skills. So I was very, very lucky, really. And so, yeah, it sounds like being a captain is just a bit more than just, you know, steering a boat. It is a little bit, um, but it's it's really quite nice. It's a it's a lovely semi-retirement job, uh, and uh, we always get our satisfaction from how our customers enjoy themselves, and that's why when we when they leave the vessel, I always say goodbye to them personally and uh, make them feel that little bit special. And it adds a nice touch, I think. It does. Yeah. It does. As a kid, the thing I loved most was fishing for yabbies, and the Murray River just so happens to be full of them. I wonder what Michael can cook up for us if we take some home. I've been eating yabbies all my life, but I've never had them in pasta. So today, Michael, I've brought some yabbies back from Murray Bridge. Brilliant. What can you make for me? Well, I reckon we should have some yabbies with some linguine uh, and an olive oil sauce. Really simple, really quick, but super yummy, and it'll really show off the yabby and, and I guess that great flavour that is inspired by Murray Bridge. Great, I love yabbies, so I'm really Perfect. excited for this dish. All right, so we're going to put the pasta on first. Yep. So, as always with pasta, rapidly boiling salted water, and we're just going to chuck our linguine in. We've got a hot pan here on sort of a medium to high heat. Just going to add a fair bit of olive oil. Now, it might look like a lot, but the olive oil is actually going to make up our sauce, so we need a fair bit of that, and it's going to coat the pasta, and it's going to make it nice and rich. Then I've got some, uh, some anchovies to put in. Essentially, what I'm doing is just flavouring this oil with a bit of salt. You won't really notice it as like anchovies in there, it'll just be in a, a nice salty flavour. Yeah. We just want to get all the flavour out of it, we don't want to burn them and crisp them up, so just give it a couple of minutes to bubble away. Do you want to chuck in some of the garlic? Yeah, sure. And the chilli. garlic. And, and then we're going to cook this on a really low heat, like super low, because what we want to do is we don't want to burn anything or, or even brown it. We just want to get all the essential oil out. So I'm going to keep dropping the heat down, sort of, we're on quite a low heat now. And what it's going to do is flavour that oil up. So when the oil coats the pasta, it's got garlic, chilli and anchovy. Our pasta's ready to go. So what we're going to do first is add our yabby meat to our oil really yeah. quickly. And all we're going to do is just start warming this through. It's already cooked, and we've sliced it up nice and fine. So we're just going to stir it through, start coating it in those oils that we've flavoured up, and then we're going to start adding our pasta. So what we're going to do is just drag it across. And if you want to start sort of mixing it all through, that'd be great. I'm going to bring a little bit of the pasta water over too, which will help make our sauce. Really simple like that. And that literally is our dish almost done. So all I'm going to do now is while you do that, I'm going to add heaps of uh, parsley. It's going to really freshen it up. Mm, definitely. We'll turn off the heat now too, because once you add your parsley, you don't really want to cook anymore. You just want to turn it off and let it sort of just get heat up with the pasta. Um, and that's the dish ready to go. So super simple yabby dish. I guess we should just plate it up now. I'm just going to drag it over into this lovely bowl we've got here. A couple of nice scoops. You can see all the beautiful 
chunks of chilli and garlic. Do you want to finish it off by just grating on some of that lemon zest? The lemon and crustaceans go so well together. We're just going to then add just a bit more parsley. That's our super simple dish of yabby linguine with an olive oil sauce inspired by Murray Brick. I tell you what, Mark, it was so quick and yeah. I cannot wait to taste it. Beautiful. <laughs>
see them come in and oh, grab their go. food. Let's call them in. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Jamie. All good. So what I'll get you today? <clears throat> oh, yum, grab yum. this nice piece of meat. <laughs> okay. Hold it up here. <sighs> and when I say drop, and here comes Leroy, our uh, oldest boy. Drop away. Oh my God. Wow, what an experience. I was nervous for about three seconds, <laughs> and then after that I was all right. I think my heart stopped for you. I didn't want him to get oh. your hands ready. <laughs> you're going to have a go. Don't think you're getting away with this, Shannon. So, Shannon, it'll be your go next. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Incozzi, our younger male's going to come in. Yeah. And when I say drop, you can drop. It smells go. pretty good, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> can I put Shannon in the hole? <clears throat> no, I'm not. Oh, I wouldn't fit down there, even me. Yes, yeah, would. I don't think so. So here comes in Cozzy. All right. Hey, Cozzy. Yep, it you in? can drop. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, wow, he's really getting into that, isn't he? Wow. Were you nervous? Oh, I don't know. I just didn't want him to, to attack <laughs> the cage. <laughs> 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 so once the two males are fed and ready for bed, we head over to the lioness headquarters. We are informed that there are three lion cubs that have been born in late April, and they have just reached an age where they're starting to come out of the den. So if we're lucky, we'll get a close look at them as well. And sure enough, there they are, enjoying the afternoon sun with mum. It is interesting to note that lion cubs are born with distinctive brown spots, similar to that of a leopard. Although these fade as they grow older, the faint markings can often be seen on the legs and undersides, particularly on the females. It's quite amazing watching these cute, playful cubs and thinking that once they grow up, they become one of the most dangerous predators on earth. In the wild, the mother provides her cubs with milk and when they are old enough to eat solids, she then hunts for food. Here, of course, it's a little different as the lions are in the good hands of the keepers. However, nothing stops the natural instincts. The cubs will still play and wrestle with each other and other members of the pride, which provides a very cute show for the spectators. Minato is very proud of the new additions to the family and are very happy to share their views with us. So Sarah, you've taken us to the other enclosure here with the lionesses in them and we've been lucky enough to see some cubs. Can you tell me about them? We've actually got three new additions uh, to our lioness group here at Minato Zoo, which is very, very cool. Mm. So our new mum, Tiombi, um, gave birth to a male and two females um, and they're just starting to actually show their playful colours and uh, come out a lot more um, from their den, so it's been great to see. So the visitors are actually able to see them out and about now? So on occasion at the moment, um, they're coming out a couple of times during the day, especially on the nice sunny days. Mm. Um, um, so hopefully the visitors are lucky enough to, to get a peak view um, and hopefully in the near future they'll actually go out onto exhibit with the other girls so that'll be fantastic. Oh good and how do they get along with the other lionesses? So it's a slow process trying to introduce the other females um, with, with the cubs of course um, but because mum's quite high ranked um, she definitely uh, puts the other girls in their place and they, they know that they need to be uh, careful around their, her babies. So why is it important at Monato that you actually breed all your animals? So obviously yum, having these lions born means that they're, they're actually really happy in their large enclosure um, and they're healthy and they're yeah, just enjoying life. They're popping out cubs so <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic there we go. The to must, see. Life must be good. That's right. <laughs> well Sarah, thank you so much for showing us around Monato Zoo today. It's been an absolute blast and um, this one here is just a bit, a bit too close for comfort. I I'm ready to go I reckon. No so, worries Shannon, thank so you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Cheers. I had so much fun in the Murray Bridge region and who would have thought we'd get to feed the lions and see the cubs? Oh, I know, my tummy's rumbling just still thinking about it. <laughs> if you'd like to catch up on today's episode, go to getasatravel.com. And make sure you like us on Facebook. Ooh.